Hi, it's Dr. Alex Popovich and welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about personal knowledge management system and how I'm using it in Notion and Rome. At this stage I'm still deciding whether or not to use both programs or use everything in Notion. So let's dive in. Personal knowledge, it's not just about learning things. It's about finding the way that you integrate what you learn but you also then find ways how you're going to use your learning for development of new ideas, businesses, projects, goals, or anything that you do. So in this day and age, you can develop a huge amount of file. And this is where the input of your knowledge is or all of the file system that you're going to have. They could be as a photos, videos, web pages, voice memos, or any storage systems that you might have. and um, But it's not just that, it's also notes. It might be a handwritten notes that you use, a text, book notes, uh, and often you need to have some sort of reference manager systems or library type systems where you're going to store all these documents. And to be honest, this is a really hard to do in this day and age because no system is perfect and it depends what you're going to be using it for. So today I'll be mostly talking about the knowledge uh, in the personal knowledge database and about the kind of a knowledge files that most of us have. Most of them are in the way of books, articles, journals and notes and they tend to be mostly either uh, kind of uh, files on a computer type written in a do um, and the word documents or web pages or something like that PDFs uh, especially here and uh, occasionally handwritten notes and you have to put it all into your personal knowledge database now when you go through your notes and you write your smart notes, you shouldn't be just kind of highlighting um, the text, but you should be actually writing your own personal notes because that's how you interpret the knowledge from what you've just read or article that you've just read. And also you might come up with some sort of ideas that you've generated. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, but those and ideas and thoughts are really, really important. And then you have to figure out how you're go going to put them, these ideas back into your knowledge database. Out of this then knowledge database, this will impact then on your whole life system, but most importantly on your tasks, projects and goals that you want to achieve that you want to learn uh, whatever those goals are. So if we go back to this diagram that you've seen in one of the previous videos, you here you are in the top of the rank as a person and you have all these kind of uh, areas of your life, whether they're work or personal or relationships areas. And uh, you have your goals and they might be projects or routines. And out of those, there might be some tasks that come out. And you might be doing your weekly and monthly and quarterly reviews to see how you're going. But on top of that, somewhere to the sides, um, there is this knowledge system. There is a knowledge system that's affecting everything you do and that impacts on your work, relationships and personal areas and your goals then in kind of turn goes down to the tasks. And that's why these two areas are interconnected. Um, there are kind of, uh, um, they flow from one. So often we have um, these databases that we collect this information in. P partially depends who you are as a person, what type of database you will need, but all, most of us will need some sort of uh, electronic type database or a system. Um, because it's very hard in this day and age to have everything on paper. It's not very easy to store, it's too big and we all lack space. But most importantly, it's not that easily accessible. It's possible if you're that type of person, if you're always in one 
space and sitting in one space or you can put these ideas on a piece of paper and then file them uh, in the cabinet. Um, but most of us kind of use this combined system of paper and digital or we are purely digital. And this is where your lifestyle makes a huge impact of how you're going to use and store the files and being able to access it. You're always on a go um, or you're always at a desk. Uh, you might have a different need or do you have a combination of, of areas that you work from or that you deal with. Whether you're using one platform or multi-platform and that's often related to work being often on Windows platform and then personal might be Windows or Mac. Are you sharing, not sharing, sharing a lot of stuff with your colleagues? Do you need those capabilities in a program? And is it just personal or is it personal and work? And all this is actually going to impact on how you're going to deal with things and which programs you may use to develop your personal um, knowledge system. You also have to have some sort of way to store these documents or do these programs automatically store it and then pull it out. So if you're going to develop your storage system then you have to look at the size. Ability to be easily shared, um, uh, the storage, these are the ones that are easily shared. Notion can be shared but it's not that easy to share share a file. So you might have a link in your Notion uh, where you've stored your files if you're using Dropbox to find it. And what are your company and work needs? Uh, but the most important thing of the personal uh, knowledge management system is the output. So your output depends basically on who you are. Are you going to use your personal knowledge just for record keeping? And that's actually really easy and you can do it with anything versus integrating your knowledge and more importantly, generating further ideas for improving your knowledge of uh, improving your content. So all of this personal knowledge um, that you're storing depends always on what you're going to use it for and how you're going to do it. So any system they're going to use as a personal knowledge database or management system has to fit your needs. It's not going to be perfect when you just start because you don't actually know how you're going to connect these ideas or pages or uh, knowledge um, banks. Um, but with time, it's going to um, change and you're going to improve it to fit the most your needs. If you're never going to use it, then there's no need to do anything in some ways. But if you are, then you need to have a system to generate these ideas, connect them and use them down the track. Otherwise, you're just doing too much work for no really any gain. So in the beginning in Notion, I had all these databases uh, that were separate because it worked a bit better like it. I could deal with it that way. And this is, for example, my reading list. So I used to read books in Blinkist, um, which is a summary area. And then I would figure out whether or not I wanted to get the book or if the book was recommended by someone, I would put it into to get area. If I haven't started reading it, started reading it or completed reading it. And these are kind of store, uh, grouped by status. I would, um, if we go to any of the books, for example, I sometimes had the notes in them. I completed it, who the author was in different tags. I mostly read books on Kindle and I used, I always highlight it. And it was very kind of um, a bit difficult to properly uh, move your highlights into the notes until I found this new data uh, or program called uh, readwise.io and you can export all your head um, all your highlights into your notion or into Rome research so I um, now I've exported all these books 
into this area. But if we look at the latest um, book I'm reading, um, so you will see it will automatically take this out for you. Um, and it's uh, knowledge production, so it would be smart notes. It might be research. And this is how you are um, connected to your knowledge production area in Notion and how you're going to generate idea where you're going to put these books or the lines or um, when you're reading in a certain locations, you're going to put some of your notes and then put some keywords or connections to that um, area so you can find it later on you can generate the uh, the uh, topics and then when you go into those pages you then take your own notes or you might have a combination of the stuff from a uh, notion or from the book into that uh, knowledge production or a pipeline uh, area where you make the notes on a different things that you are looking into and this is how you generate further ideas you will also have an idea um, database which is going to connect the bo both of these now Rome works differently in notion you have this top-down um, process where you have to decide the area that it, you're going to make it into and then connect the knowledge it's much more hierarchical structure um, while in Rome it kind of goes it goes from bottom up um, approach where it kind of later on you will connect or you will connect to area as you go and change it so we've talked before how Rome works through the hashtags so when you import your book the highlights from uh, Kindle into Rome research you will come with quite a lot of relevant data but I've added keywords and also relevant notes uh, so the relevant notes are the areas that you're connecting it to uh, they might be some of the ideas you've had before and by making that area really big you will uh, start starting to generate more and more and more ideas I also put why I'm reading the book and how useful I have found the book. Um, this is the area where I tend to put the quotes that I found from the book. Um, and the permanent notes or evergreen notes or my idea. It's not really ideas, but kind of like ideas that I want to kind of develop into something or um, anything that I found really useful. Uh, and so w within this link because that's how it works you get a lot of areas that are different and where you're going to find it so if you find a permanent note that's not linked to a research or something you're reading but it's come up through your idea it might be linked through a date while um, it might, I might have some through the videos that I've watched or the notes or stuff that I've uh, read or um, then you write your literature notes and uh, um, and this is the highlights that happened from Kindle. All this kind of stuff that you add, that you connect, and how you're going to connect is all in a state of flux because it kind of changes what you find useful and how things evolve. Uh, because the two programs, um, Rome Research and Notion, are quite different, um, it takes you time to figure out how to process stuff that you've used in Notion to generate more ideas and how that works in the Rome. Should I just use the Rome research for my personal knowledge management? And that's probably where it's going to go into um, and how I'm going to then con connect it um, versus um, using it in Notion where I actually have to physically connect. Um, and this is where, for example, if we minimize the highlights, I might find some unlinked references. So if I click on this, there is no unlinked references, but there may be some actually 
unlinked references that you find within uh, stuff that you've written that you can then use down the track to generate as well ideas. But if I'm just connecting the relevant notes and ideas this way, then maybe Notion is equally good. So at the moment, I'm using both. I'm trying to copy things into two areas what I've written in uh, uh, Rome research and then putting it in Notion and putting these tags and see how it works. Because having one program is always better than having two programs because you waste sometimes time moving from one or the other. But if one program is definitely better than uh, the other, then it's worth using it and paying for it. The top-down approach, for example, if you look at the database, the way that Notion works, the books database approach, it doesn't work here. This is almost like just a list. This is the uh, no, um, the book that, that it's in there, but it doesn't really, uh, you have to go to that other page to find more details. You can put additional index where you have reading, read, and to read. Uh, areas and I'm looking into that. So reading, um, I it's come up as a, also um, uh, journals. So I can probably filter um, because I don't have it. I just probably need to filter it by uh, journals or article um, as well. And that way I won't see it. But there is nothing. This is a blank page. It just holds the repository or the reference of all of the books uh, that I might have read that are in that database. And here, when you import from um, Readwise, you can see here, if I go Readwise, uh, you will see that all the books um, and publications have been imported. So here is where you find the books and the articles that have been important from Readwise. Um, you may not find it in any other areas. So in conclusion, um, the both Rome Research and Notion com work completely differently in how you're going to generate idea. But both of them could be a repository of your notes where you're going to kind of uh, write uh, or develop your learning process, What uh, application you're going to do to write your notes and then generate the ideas. But the whole process of generating ideas is a bit different. So I would suggest you trial bit of both applications and see which one fits you better for what you're trying to do and then learn more how it actually works for you to generate those ideas. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will go into more details about how to take smart notes and my review on that book, as well as how you import the books from Readwise.io or anywhere else into Rome Research and how you do the same thing in Notion. And I will talk more how I use these notes and research to generate ideas in both applications. Bye for now.